These are omnidirectional wheels. Their surface contact points are made of small rollers which enables movement in any direction. They can be driven in the standard direction like normal wheels, but they can roll sideways as well. Of course there are different kinds of those wheels, cheaper ones which rollers are made of plastic and mounted without ball bearings or more expensive ones where the rollers are made of rubber and mounted with ball bearings. Unfortunately they have their price, these are $16 each. So what are they used for? Like the name says, they are not limited in their direction, they are omnidirectional. When looking on standard robots, they always have the constraint that they have to turn when they want to drive into another direction. Omnidirectional robots don't have to. They are able to drive into any direction due to the rollers on their wheels. Of course they are still able to steer into another direction. The physics behind this are very simple, you just need a bit of math and ChatGPT. Based on this I wrote a little test simulation in Python which draws a three-wheeled omnidirectional robot with its speed and orientation shown with the middle arrow and the according wheel velocities with the smaller ones on the wheels itself. Now we can see how the wheel velocities are changing according to the speed and orientation of the robot. Let's turn the simulated robot into a real one. Of course, the base of it is a printed circuit board. All electronics, the motors and the hardware should be mounted to this. In the middle of the board we have the three motor drivers which can power the motors with three different speeds. On the right side we have the ESP32-S2 with a three-dimensional antenna and the PVM driver which will control the three motor drivers. On the left side we have some sensors and battery management chips as well as the USB port which is for charging the battery and for flashing the MCU. In the last sector we have a connector where a camera can be connected to. The same one which is used on the well known ESP32 cam boards. After I finished the board design it was time to send the files to PCBWay which is also the sponsor of today's video. Due to their quick order function you only need to upload your board files and all the necessary informations are filled in automatically. All the user specifications can be set manually. For this board I selected 2mm thickness and a matte green solder mask color. The stencils can be easily added to the order in this step. PCBWay can also print, mill or machine your own parts. They also do PCB assembly but I love it so I do it on my own. I have ordered both a 3 and a 4 wheeled omnidirectional robot PCB, but let me show you the assembly process for the 4 wheeled one.
Actually, I have designed both robots after each other. With the first one, the four-wheeled one, I have done a few stupid mistakes. First one is that I have switched both the footprint of the front white LEDs as well as the connector for the camera. But the even bigger mistake is that I have used an I.O. expander chip which cannot handle PVM. This results in a, let's call it, multi-directional robot because the motors can only be powered on or off, so that the wheels can only spin at full speed or not at all. I fixed all the issues with a three-wheeled robot, corrected the footprints, switched to another PVM driver and additionally switched to a better Wi-Fi antenna. The rest almost stays the same. After the wheels were mounted and the battery connected, it was time for the first test. The camera is mounted with a self-designed 3D printed part and two tiny screws. Additionally, I printed a little mount which can be snapped on the three motors. The software for the robot is currently in a basic state. The ESP creates a little web server, which will show the camera as a video stream and provides sliders for the brightness of the front LEDs and for the rotational speed of the robot. In the bottom part of the page, there is a hidden joystick, which will appear once a finger is placed. From there on, the finger controls the driving direction as well as the driving speed. The video stream is currently a bit laggy, mostly because of two things. The Wi-Fi antenna is not yet impedance matched, and the ESP32-S2 has only 2 MB of PS RAM, because I haven't used an external RAM chip. It is working, but there is space for improvement. Next to the web server, the robot is able to drive via another ESP-based device over ESP Now. Here I am using the newest PicoClick, which is equipped with a 6 degrees of freedom inertial measurement unit. With a standard configuration, the robot can be controlled to drive and to rotate based on the movements of the PicoClick. In the second configuration, only the driving is enabled and the rotational movements are disabled. The third configuration is a switched mode of config2, so that the PicoClick controls only the robot direction. The three different modes can be selected with the PicoClick's button and are visualized with the onboard LEDs.
Enough for now, but I have updated both the design of the three-wheeled and the four-wheeled robot. PCBs are already here, so stay tuned and see you in the next one.